that surface cell material. And that's the interpretation that I favor, but we don't know for sure. So I, just a comment that has slides. <laughs> Uh, the microphone is coming. <laughs> yes. I mean, I agree. I think we, in, in the novi, we don't really know what's doing the shaping. Is right. it the accretion disk? Is it the sediment cell material? Or is it the nova outburst itself that's bipolar? Right. And we're working on trying to disentangle. And if we, if we put this all the way back, it's hard to disentangle because we can't disentangle it, but if we throw this all the way back, Take this free expansion all the way back to zero. Yeah. Doesn't go to zero. We got uh, early, very early observations uh, of our RSO as a practice allowing. And the point <laughs> about RSO is that the explosion is taking place inside the uh, outer atmosphere of a red giant. We can see the shot moving through. In fact, it was detected by the burst and transient detector on SWIFT. And that tells us exactly when the explosion occurred. We follow the hard x-rays until they dissipate as they move out through the other edge of the red giant. Exactly. And if, and if you follow this down to zero, it doesn't, like I was saying, it doesn't go down to zero. It actually goes to what is the breakout point whenever you leave the red giant wind that has been blowing for 21 years which it seems to suggest that this blast wave was moving really fast through the red giant wind. And once it got to the end of the red giant wind, it just started coasting. At this, which corresponds to at the distance of 1.6 kiloparsecs, that's about 3,000 kilometers per second. And it entrains material from the red giant that never took part in the outburst. Right, so you get a really, you can't really infer chemistry of ejecta from Extended mission. Uh, Eric, uh, is there, you could try to constrain the momentum distribution uh, that would give some constraint that then compared to the luminosity and the nova that you know from theory by C get directed momentum. If that would help, it's probably maybe we've done that. Yeah, we're working yeah, we're <coughs> on that, but we're, I asked each other if she can give me an estimate of the shoulder to a rotorial density enhancement so we can actually see if the X-ray observations are consistent with the blast wave stopping. Because in the X-ray observations, you see the blast wave stop. And it, but it, obviously, it's something that's not stopped. So either it needs a jet, or it's because there's an equatorial density enhancement, and it's stopped in the equatorial region, but not in the polar region, which is exactly what uh, general interactive stellar winds should happen. Like, yeah, and, and then, of course, if, if, you, if the, you can also constrain the energy to some extent. Right, and this, and it's perfect. this is exactly why these are, planet, these are, these are planetary nebula fast forward, because we know it's a single impulse in the blast wave that throws all of this energy into the system. We don't see the blast wave disappear. The blast wave, hard x-rays from the blast wave are decreasing when we suddenly see the soft x-rays from a hot underlying white dwarf turn on, and they completely swamp yeah. these hard x-rays. Right. And that just, we slow down. I mean, we, we start taking less observing time because the swift XRT detector switches from W's mode to E's, whatever. One, one to the other because it gets an amp right. And then it does this, but that's a different problem. Okay, a few more minutes left. Give you a chance to ask your question. <coughs> so, we'll add Karina. Merch.
go back to what you were before, just remain like that. It's for sure something is happening here. Even more than to say that people throw it high, but every day has to pass in the second I can basically pierce through the pseudo photosphere of the five people that it was made. So I <laughs> Well, it goes, it goes with the photos and that point, but th there's no way they can manage now. There's no way they can manage now. So all the time will have a much too high to be taken by the end. But if the primary will somehow explode to a black hole or a neutral star, then when this neutral star or black hole will eventually be engulfed by the present secondary, then we will have a merger of two neutral stars or something. This is interesting, people talking about such, such mergers. Not now, too much more time. Uh, yeah, okay, any more questions? Is the speakers want to ask anything of the audience? <laughs> <laughs> And I think we call it an, uh, a halt. There are lots of posters to read, so we'll take your time. There might even be coffee. Is there? Yes. Yeah, there is. And please, there are three posters to sign. So please, even if you don't know the people but personally, it would be appreciated if you could put your name on it anyway. Thank you. And thanks again to all the speakers.